Guestimate's new cutting blade worked kind of well, but it wasn't really the solution to TPU opponents. So today we're just going to try and store as much energy as we possibly can. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Before we get into exactly how we're going to optimize the energy output of this particular weapon system, we first need something to compare it to. I need some way of hitting something and comparing the damage that this system does compared to the new system we're going to put in. But before all that, we kind of need to do just a little bit of repair. This motor came out of guesstimate in the rumble for the finals. It's also very, very dead. I cannot move this by hand. Uh, it just does not work. So we need to get a new motor in here and also secure the motors so something like this doesn't happen again. To stop this from happening again and having to replace another motor, I'm going to use some double-sided tape. The easy thing here is literally just a tiny little bit of double-sided tape in underneath the motor, top and bottom, to hold it in place. Guestimate is all back together and ready to do this test and standardize how well this weapon actually works. So let's look at what we're hitting. It's this. It's not really that exciting. It's a 170 gram block of PLA and an old beta weight weapon just kind of jammed inside to give it extra mass. This is something that I can print over and over and over again and I can use it as a standard test to see how well a weapon works against something that's approximately 150 grams. Okay, this sets a pretty good baseline. Some cracking in the PLA print, a pretty decent hole out of one corner, but you can see like it's not huge. Like it hasn't split the PLA, which I honestly thought it should with the cutting blade on it. And there's a couple of like little dings and nicks and things that just didn't put out as much damage as I thought. And this is kind of what I was seeing in the last fight, which is why we want to do the upgrade. So how are we going to upgrade this blade? Well, with these. These are two 10 gram a piece hardened steel teeth. This basically means that all of the mass of this blade is in those little teeth. Meaning that if we were to find a way to mount these at the same radius as the current blade, basically, all of the mass is at the edges, that gives higher inertia, therefore higher energy storage and harder hits in theory. But of course to do that, we're going to need something to hold these two in place and then also probably some weight savings in the robot. We are right on the weight limit at the moment and these two teeth together weigh the same as this bar. So whatever I'm using to hold them, I need to make weight for in the robot. And that's where PCB weight comes in. PCBWay have sent me a bunch of things. To start with, they have sent me a couple of these, which are the new spinner mount, as compared to the old version that looked like this. You can see I've done a significant amount of weight saving here. These things weigh about six grams, the old ones weigh about 11. So there is a five gram weight saving in here, which is absolutely massive. Hopefully I haven't taken the weight out of areas that need it, but I really don't think I have, and realistically only one way to find out, and that's bolt all of these into a robot and get it to go. But that's not all, they have also sent me two different types of arms. So these are the things that I'm going to use to hold the spinning teeth in place. And there are two different types of them because I really don't have a lot of space in here. So having bolts stick out top and bottom is going to run me out of space very quickly. My solution to this was basically two separate PCBs. These ones that allow the bolts to go straight through them and then the other ones that are going to be tapped so that these become the nuts for the bolt holding the weapon teeth together. Saves a little bit of weight, saves a whole lot of space, and hopefully we'll get this all working. 
Let's get one of these together. It should be fairly straightforward. We're literally just going to play a game of stacking parts uh, and then bolt it all together. We also have a little disc that goes in here just to kind of keep all the PCBs flat and even through the middle and allow a better bolting down through. Uh, but that should be fairly easy to do. Now, I'm gonna just pull that out of there for the moment because all we really need to do is get the, the tooth lined up, put the bolt through, just start that thread with my fingers because realistically, we wanna get all of these in first before we tighten everything down, make sure everything's gonna work nicely. Yep, there we go. Okay, so here we go, we've got all the bolts in. Now I'm gonna really crank them down because we do not want these coming loose. I'm probably gonna end up putting a touch of hot glue on the tops here just to make sure they don't back out. Maybe even around the, the heads of the bolts themselves. Again, it's just a way of making sure they don't back out while we've got this thing up to high speed and you know it's vibrating around and getting hit and all of that kind of stuff that it's gonna get involved in. It now needs to go on some gears. This process should also be quite easy. We literally just need to line up the three things and bolt it all together. There we go. And then finally, it's weapon time. So hopefully we uh, cross our fingers and everything just kind of works here. Need to go that way around with this. Okay, that's not good necessarily. Uh, the whole weapon stack up is a little bent outwards. And when I spin this round by hand, uh, on one particular set of the rotation, these screw heads hit the chassis in here. That's not good. Okay, I need to redesign and reprint these little gears in here just to kind of make everything sit together a little bit better and maybe to raise this gear, or like this weapon, up just that little bit to get it to all fit. Okay, I finally think I have it actually working. It still contacts just a little bit, but this is as good as I can get it. It took reprinting this first gear, countersinking the PCBs, and also cutting these very short screws even shorter. But now I think we have something that will actually spin up. So let's uh, take a brand new test block and hit something. Ah, well, that is unfortunate. Uh, yeah, I got a couple of shots on the test block. It's, the damage is okay, but the big problem is that I was having a huge amount of difficulty getting this weapon to start up. I had to basically spin the robot in the same direction I wanted the weapon to spin, and then also kick the weapon up at around the same time. And doing all of that, sometimes the weapon would start but not always. And in fact, most of the time it actually didn't start doing that. That's one of the things I wasn't really thinking about with the fact that I was storing a ton more energy in this bar. That means it is a lot harder to start up. And I am currently gearing the output in such a way that the weapon bar is spinning faster than the motor, which means the motor has got less torque than it should otherwise have which is not great. Especially when I'm spinning something that has such a high moment of inertia like this new weapon bar. I think this system can work. I think what I need is I need a smaller, higher speed motor in here and to gear it so that the output is running much slower 
than the weapon motor itself. But I'm gonna have to order those and that's gonna take a while to come in. So that is not gonna happen in this video. It probably, in fact, will happen in a short much later on. And for now, I'm going to need to put the old weapon bars back on and keep running guesstimate with those. But I do want to get to using these new PCB weapons because honestly, I think the whole thing looks really good. Like I love the look of the front end with the hollow bar and the hollow weapon mounting system. I think it just looks really, really nice. So I want to get to using this as it is currently set up. However, the next fight report you see for this probably won't use this. It will either use the old weapons or even older weapons that I have lying around from other things, but I need to work that out between now and next event. Anyway, that is gonna be it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video.